Welcome back to the Monte Carlo Report. Let me remind everybody again that if you'd like to have Volume 1 and 2 of the Monte Carlo Report published form, then give me an email. I'll mail one right out to you. In this segment of the Monte Carlo Report, we continue our examination of Bobby Jindal's Roman Catholicism as he published it in his 1996 article published in the New Oxford Review. Alright, now when the last segment ended, we were examining Bobby Jindal's claim that Catholics and Protestants worship the same God. And we determined by examining the Bible that we, in fact, do not worship the same God as the Roman Catholics. For the God of the Bible is a God who has determined whatsoever comes to pass. The God of the Bible has predestinated every event that has happened and will happen in human history. So the God of the Bible is a sovereign God. However, the God of the Roman Catholics is not sovereign. The God of the Roman Catholics is a God who has not determined whatsoever comes to pass. The God of the Roman Catholics is a God who is not capable of fulfilling his desire to save all of mankind. So he must be frustrated throughout all eternity. Therefore, these facts about the Roman Catholic God do assert that their God indeed is not omnipotent, nor could he be omniscient. So this claim by Jindal that Catholics and Protestants are worshipping the same God is completely absurd. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now since we're talking about worship between Protestants and Catholics and how they differ, we need to not just point out that Roman Catholics worship a different God than the God of the Bible. We need to also point out that they worship more than their God. They worship angels. They worship saints. They worship the Pope. They worship Mary. The Roman Catholics worship pictures and idols. They pray to them. The Bible clearly says that the worship of anything other than God is blasphemy. The worship of anything other than God is idolatry. And the fact that the Roman Catholics worship angels, Mary, saints, the Pope, whatever, the fact that they worship all of these things is nothing but an assertion that they are a polytheistic religion and not a monotheistic religion. The Bible says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the house of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 2 through 6. So not only do Roman Catholics not worship the same God as Protestants, but they put many other things in the place of God. And this is complete idolatry. It is complete blasphemy. And you will never find in the New Testament Jesus commanding his apostles to worship anything other than the Lord. You will never find in the New Testament any place where Paul or Peter wrote that you should pray to Mary or worship Mary. None of that can be found in the Bible. and They know it. This is why they have to have an external tradition outside the Bible to bring this teaching in. And this is why they don't want people to read the Bible. Because you can't read the Bible and find these teachings that the Roman Catholic Church adheres to. Let's move on now. I want to go ahead and examine the last remark that's made in his first paragraph. And that remark reads, Quote, I want to refute the notion that Catholicism is merely another denomination with no more merit than any other. End quote. Now Bobby Jindal here is proud of his Catholicism and he wants to teach with this assertion that Catholicism is not just merely another denomination, but it's the only denomination in Christianity. Uh, that's typical of a Catholic, especially a devout one. And Bobby Jindal has the right to make this statement. That's what he believes, and he has the right to freely express his belief in our society. The United States Constitution protects him so he can express his views openly and freely to all people. And we'd fight for him to have that right to express this view, even though we completely disagree with it. But that's what we are. We're Protestants, and that's what we believe in. We believe in freedom of speech and freedom of religion, even though Roman Catholics do not. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and examine this notion that Catholicism is not just another denomination. As we've seen, it's not just another denomination. In fact, it's not a denomination in Christianity at all. 
according to the Bible, Roman Catholicism is not a Christian religion. It's not a biblical religion. It's the biggest cult in the world today that professes to believe what the Bible teaches. And it's not true. So now maybe you'll just pardon me for a moment as I exercise my First Amendment right to express to everybody that Roman Catholicism is not a denomination at all in Christianity. In fact, it's the biggest cult in the world today that claims to believe that the Bible is the Word of God and that it teaches the Christian faith. Catholicism is heresy. And I profess, just like my Calvinist brothers before me, just like my Calvinist brothers right now, that the Pope of Rome is Antichrist. Now as we move on in the paper, uh, Bobby Jindal now puts forth five basic areas which the Roman Catholic Church differs with Protestantism. The first area which he starts going into is what he labels scripture and tradition. It is in this section that he begins to attack the Calvinist doctrine of sola scriptura. Let me just point out that uh, Mr. Jindal misspelled sola scriptura. He has it spelled S-O-L-D as it should be spelled S-O-L-A. You would think that if you're going to attack the most important doctrine in the history of Protestantism, you'd at least have the scholarship to check your spelling to make sure you spelled it right. Of course, just because Bobby Jindal can't spell Sola Scriptura doesn't mean he can't adequately represent it, but we'll go ahead and see if he does. Well, the first thing that Jindal wishes us to believe is that the Bible never says that it is comprehensive in its teaching. This is simply an attack on the sufficiency of Scripture, and it's one of the easiest attacks to rebut. This is one of the more foolish attacks you'll hear Roman Catholics make when they, when they try to maintain that the Bible never teaches that it is sufficient. The Bible says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Now the Bible wouldn't be sufficient if it did not enable the man of God to be perfect. If it did not enable or furnish the man of God unto all good works, then you could say the Bible is not sufficient, as the Roman Catholics claim. Notice that Paul here says that it is all Scripture that is able to make the man of God perfect, that is complete. It is all Scripture that is able to furnish the man of God unto all good works. Not some good works, but all good works. It is Scripture that does these things. Not one mention of human tradition. Well, let's turn to the book of Acts and see if Scripture is sufficient. We'll turn to chapter 17, read verse 10 and 11. There we see, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Acts chapter 17, verse 10 and 11. Well, the Bereans did not accept Paul and Silas based on their apostolic authority. No, they listened to what they had to say, and they checked every word of it with the Bible to see whether or not it was true. And this example is a historical example recorded under the inspiration of the Bible, which demonstrates that the Bible alone is sufficient to determine whether or not a minister, even one who is an apostle, is telling the truth. This is a clear example of the sufficiency of Scripture, and it's a clear proof that Roman Catholicism is completely wrong. So one of the important things that needs to be learned from Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11 is that you should not just sit under the preaching of a man and accept everything that's being said is true. You need to be ready in your mind. You need to be sharp. You need to be paying attention. You need to be looking for mistakes. Has this man contradicted the Bible? Has this man contradicted himself? Of course, to be able to do this, you're going to have to know the Bible inside out. And you're also going to have to know a little bit of logic. And of course, all of this assumes and asserts that the Bible alone is the Word of God, that is, sola scriptura.